Hello everyone, Dr. Bolaris here. During the Cretaceous period, the squamates began to diversify. Although first appearing during the early Jurassic, this lineage, which contains the familiar lizards and snakes of our Holocene world, were initially quite rare animals, with their rhynchocephalian cousins being far more numerous and diverse. However, by the early Cretaceous, this group declined quite sharply for reasons that are not well understood with the squamates moving into their vacated niches. Over the course of this period, the ancestors of modern iguanians, varanoids, snakes and many other groups emerged, including a variety of forms that are now extinct. These included the polyglyphanodontians, a highly diverse group possibly closely related to living taeids, and definitely deserving a future video on this channel. The most impressive members of the Cretaceous squamate radiation, however, were undoubtedly the mosasaurs, a lineage of at times very large marine lizards that first appeared during the early Cretaceous about 121 million years ago. While the earliest forms would have looked very much like semi-aquatic monitor lizards, by the late Cretaceous mosasaurs had cut their ties to the land and had developed into highly successful marine apex predators, some of which reached over 14 meters or 46 feet long. The rise of the mosasaurs somewhat coincided with the extinction of other famous groups of marine reptiles, including the ichthyosaurs and the pliosaurs. These animals vanished by around 90 million years ago, probably due to climatic stresses that led to the Cenomanian Turonian boundary extinction event. This left room open for the mosasaurs to expand in size, moving into the open niches. Before this oceanic faunal turnover, early mosasaurs tended to be fairly small, varanid like animals. Although despite this, the actual relationships of these marine lizards have proven to be surprisingly controversial. Scientific opinions on this have ranged quite wildly, with mosasaurs being considered either close relatives of snakes, varanoids, or quite distant from both. One of the more unusual theories has even proposed that snakes themselves are descendants of basal lizard-like mosasaurs. However, the most recent studies that I could find suggest a placement in Anguimorpha, being close relatives of monitor lizards, with any snake-like features being examples of convergent evolution. Interestingly, the snakes themselves have very controversial evolutionary relationships, although that is a whole different rabbit hole that will have to wait for another time. The oldest and most basal members of Mosasauria are generally considered to be the Dolichosaurids, sometimes thought of as a grey leading up to true Mosasauroids rather than a family. These were generally modestly sized semi-aquatic lizards, many of which seem to have inhabited coastal shallow water environments surrounding the Tethys Sea. However, the oldest potential Dolichosaurid was native to South America during the early Cretaceous, about 121 million years ago. This was the unusual genus Tetrapodophis, a long-bodied animal measuring about 20 centimeters or almost 8 inches long. None from a near-complete specimen preserved in incredible detail due to the Lagerstata effect. This animal possessed small forelimbs and hind limbs, as well as a number of snake-like features, including an elongate body, short tail, broad belly scales, a skull with a short snout and long brain case, curved jaws and sharp hooked teeth. Due to this, Tetrapodophis was originally classified as a very basal snake relative. Although more recent studies have questioned this, finding that the genus was instead a superficially snake-like Dolichosaurid. However, a study in 2023 again supported its position as a stem snake finding it to be unrelated to mosasaurs. This just goes to show how variable paleontological studies can be, with a consensus sometimes being very difficult to reach, even with very well-preserved specimens. Other less controversial Dolichosaurs were generally similar in overall shape, although somewhat less exaggerated, with short legs, elongated tails, and svelte streamlined bodies. Aside from Tetrapodophis, the oldest known member of the group was Kaganias, from the Baremian of Japan. Living in a swampy region roughly 121 million years ago, this animal measured about half a metre long and was an elongated semi-aquatic carnivore that probably fed on insects, mollusks and small fish. The limbs were small, with Kaganaya swimming in an undulating, snake-like fashion. Unlike many of its later relatives, this lizard was an inhabitant of freshwater ecosystems, 
demonstrating how early Mosasaur relatives made the gradual transition from terrestrial lizards to more specialised semi-aquatic forms. All later Dolichosaurs have been found from across the former Tethys region, with their remains having been found in North America, Europe and the Levant. This suggests that they were coastal animals, perhaps living somewhat like less specialised versions of modern sea snakes, ambushing fish and other small marine prey. The tiny genus Adriosaurus, measuring just 30 centimetres or 12 inches long, was native to what is now Slovenia, and possessed greatly reduced, almost vestigial forelimbs. It would have lived in a calm, nearshore environment. Other forms such as Pontosaurus and Judeosaurus were present across the Levant, living in coastal waters of what is now Lebanon and the West Bank. The type genus Dolichosaurus inhabited Cenomania in England and would have somewhat resembled a small nothosaur, with a small pointed skull sitting atop an elongated neck. The snake-like nature of Dolichosaurids have often led researchers to propose a connection between the two, although such a relationship has not always been recovered. Despite the appearance of more derived marine mosasaurs, these modest smaller forms persisted until near the end of the Cretaceous, with the genus Primitivus from southern Italy surviving into the Campanian or Maastrichtian. Beyond the Dolichosaurids lies the more derived clade Mosasauroidea, which first appears in the fossil record about a hundred million years ago. These were once divided up into the smaller and less specialised Agialosaurids, and the larger, entirely marine Mosasaurids. However, recent studies have demonstrated that their relationship was more complex than this. Two genera were once thought to be placed in Agialosauridae, although this is currently uncertain. These were Agialosaurus itself, which was named based on remains recovered from Cenomanian age rocks in Croatia, dating to between 99 and 94 million years ago. This is in the same time period and region as the Dolichosaurs, which suggests that Mosasaurs as a group probably evolved in and around the Tethys before migrating further during the late Cretaceous. A Gelosaurus measured up to one meter or just over three feet long and would have resembled a semi-aquatic monitor lizard with narrow pointed jaws. While its skull was similar to those of later Mosasaurs, this animal's post-cranial remains show that it could still return to land when necessary. The generally similar Opetiosaurus also lived in Croatia at the same time, and was once thought to be simply another species of Agialosaurus. Apparently, this southern European country was a haven for early Mosasaurs, as the recently described Portunatosaurus has also been found here as well. Also measuring about a metre long, this animal nicely demonstrates a transition to marine habits with its feet being about halfway between terrestrial lizards and the flippers of derived mosasaurs. Other forms managed to spread away from Europe and into the Americas, with Vallejiosaurus, known from Mexico between 94 and 89 million years ago. These basal forms swam in a snake-like manner by undulating their bodies from side to side, giving rise to the more specialised marine mosasaurids by around 94 million years ago. These are too numerous and diverse to cover in this video, and I'll save a detailed look at these animals for another time. However, for now, the Mosasaurus generally managed to cut their ties to the land, developing a number of specialised features to aid this lifestyle, including flippers, tail fins, and in some cases dorsal fins similar to those of sharks or cetaceans. They also seem to have been endothermic, which is interesting as living monitor lizards also have quite high metabolisms for squamates. Such adaptations led Mosasaurus to quickly colonise the world's oceans, with the family splitting into three main subdivisions. These included the fairly modestly sized Halisaurines, the diverse Rosellosaurina, and the famous Mosasaurines. While it was once thought that these three lineages diverged from a fully marine common ancestor, the discovery of the tiny and basal Mosasaurine Dallasaurus disrupted this view. Measuring just a metre long, this genus lacked flippers and retained independent digits on each foot, indicating that flippers evolved several times within Mosasauridae. Dallasaurus was native of the western interior seaway of North America about 92 million years ago, a region that would later go on to produce the largest of all Mosasaurs by the end of the Cretaceous. But that is a story best left for another time. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be following on from my recent video covering the evolution of Euornithine avians, where I'll be examining the radiation of marine and semi-aquatic ornithurine avians during the late Cretaceous. See you again soon. Cheerio.